Okay, so this is the molar volume of a gas exploration. So if we work through the procedure, step one says on your tables you should find a large bucket filled with water, a small piece of magnesium metal, so that's what this is, a glass burette, so that's over here, that's this long glass tube, um, and a rubber stopper with copper wire, and that is right here. So step two says mass the piece of magnesium and record below. So I'm going to mass my magnesium. The mass of my magnesium is 0 0.04, no, 0.05 grams. So I'm going to write that in my data table, 0 0.05 grams. And then it says fold the piece of magnesium but leave the surface exposed. See picture. So I'm going to fold my piece of magnesium. Just kind of in a loop, um, but I'm not going to crumple it up. I still want all the, pe all the sides exposed. And then step four says wrap the magnesium in a cage of copper wire. You don't want your magnesium to float away. So I'm going to use my stopper with my copper wire. And I'm just going to kind of wrap these two around each other. When we do the reaction, we don't want the magnesium to go away because otherwise it makes the reaction take a little bit longer. So there it's all wrapped up in the copper wire, still nice and exposed, um, but it's, I don't think it's going to float away. Okay, so step five says pour approximately 10 milliliters of six molar hydrochloric acid into the burette. Hydrochloric acid can be found in the fume hood. So first I'm going to make sure that my valve here at the end is closed. And then I already got my 10 milliliters of 6 molar hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to add that carefully to my burette. Okay, so I have all 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid in the bottom of my burette. Then it says fill burette with tap water. I'm going to use another beaker to do this just to make it a little bit easier. You want it filled all the way up to the top so you can see the water goes all the way up to the top of the burette. Step seven says insert stopper into the end of the burette. The burette should be completely filled with liquid. So this is probably going to overflow a little bit. That's okay. better for it to overflow than to have space in there because the whole point of this is we're going to measure the volume of the gas that we produce. Now my stopper has a hole in the bottom of it. That's where the copper wire goes through. So step eight says place finger over hole and stopper and inver invert burette in the large bucket of water. End should be below the water level. Okay, so I'm going to put my finger over the stopper and in one motion I'm going to flip the whole thing upside down and put it in my bucket. And step nine says since hydrochloric acid is more dense than water, it will take a minute for the reaction to begin. So the hydrochloric acid is going to move down the burette and it will eventually hit the piece of magnesium metal at the bottom. And then we're just going to let the reaction happen, and then we'll move on with step 10 once the reaction's finished.
So I can start to see bubbles coming up the burette. That's the sign that the reaction's happening. Because when we react magnesium with hydrochloric acid, we produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen gas is what we're going to be measuring. And so now that the hydrochloric acid has hit the bottom of the burette, we can really see that reaction begin. So now we're seeing lots of bubbles. The bubbles is the hydrogen gas that's being produced in the reaction. And since it's a gas, we know that it's less dense than the liquid, so it's going to move to the top of the burette. We wanted a hole in the stopper so that since the gas is going to be displacing some of the liquid, the liquid can go out the bottom and into the bucket. That's why we have the burette upside down in a bucket. That way we can have some place for that water and excess hydrochloric acid to go. So now we see lots and lots of bubbles because we're producing lots of hydrogen gas. Okay, so the reaction's still going. I'm going to see if I can adjust the camera so that you can see the top of the burette so you can see where the gas is forming. So if we look up at the top of the burette, now we can see where there's all that empty space. Well, that's not empty space. That's full of hydrogen gas. So we're going to let this reaction keep going until the bubbles stop forming. And then we're going to be able to read the volume of the hydrogen gas that we produce.
So my piece of magnesium down at the bottom is getting smaller because I'm going to use all the magnesium. And since it's getting smaller, it's starting to come loose from the cage. And there it goes. It floated up to the top. So now our reaction looks a little bit different because our piece of magnesium is up here at the top instead of the bottom. So we're not going to see bubbles come from the bottom. We see the bubbles forming right at the top of where the liquid is. It's actually kind of cool because we can see the piece of magnesium getting smaller and smaller as it's getting used up and turned into magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And it's almost gone. Okay, it looks like most of it's gone. I'm going to wait for these bubbles to kind of settle a little bit before I take my final reading for my volume. Now, when you read the volume from a burette, it actually reads 100 at the bottom of the burette, which is now the top. So down towards the valve, it reads 100. And as you move up towards the top, it gets closer and closer to zero. So we're going to have to do, we're going to read the number, just like we'd read it off of a graduated cylinder, and then we're going to subtract it from 100. So we're going to do 100 minus our volume reading. That way we get the amount of volume of the gas up here in the top. Okay, so it seems like the bubbles have pretty much stopped. So I'm going to write in my data table 100 minus, and then I'm going to turn my head upside down. Still reading from the bottom of the meniscus. So it reads 51.12. I'm going to say 51.5 milliliters. So if I calculate 100 minus 51.5 milliliters, that gets me the volume of the gas. Now, um, we have a little bit of an issue with our burette. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up and pull the stopper out because I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to drain everything that's left and pull the stopper out. Now, if I flip my burette back over, there's this space here at the bottom between the valve and the 100 milliliter mark. Now, our gas occupied that volume, but we don't know how much that is. So I'm gonna fill it with tap water. Just enough tap water. And I'm gonna adjust that volume by opening the valve. I want the meniscus right at that 100 milliliter mark. So I'm draining it out. Okay, now the meniscus is right at the 100 milliliter mark. So now I can measure how much water is in this space. So I'm going to take my burette and I'm going to pour it carefully back into my 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. And I'm going to set my burette off to the side. Put my graduated cylinder back down on the table so I can measure the volume. That space occupies 6.25 milliliters. So I'm going to write that in number three, 6.25 milliliters. Now in box four of my data table, I can sum up the volumes of my gas. So that would be the sum of the data from numbers two and three. So now I've completed my procedure. The only two additional pieces of data I need are my room temperature and the room pressure, and then the vapor pressure of the water, and we have all the data that we need to be able to calculate the molar volume of our hydrogen gas.